Welcome back, my warriors. This is Cyrus Hygon, and we are going to be doing some Solaris. Um, this is my Mauler. Uh, great mech. Lots of fun. Got it from the Resistance 2 pack. And it's running a pair of UAC 10s, ER medium lasers. And we're going to go ahead and ditch the AMS on this. Four. Oh wait, my apologies. Something that I like to play here, Solaris Mauler. There we go. This is the right mech. Boom, just like that. All right. So what we're looking for is four AC2s and four SRM4s. It's a little hot. Uh, 1.3 heat management, and it is designed to leg people. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show what that can do. We've got a minute and a half before the game gets started, so I'll uh, give you some briefs. The current meta in this style of game play seems to be to use projectile weapons, high DPS, and I see a lot of spray and pray. Um, people are going for the cores, people are going for the torsos, that's great. Love to see that. But, the consequence of that is, the mechs that are being used are super, super heavy, and super, super uh, DPS heavy. So, what we're doing is, we're going a totally different route than what I've encountered, I've heard a lot of complaints about this, but I've not encountered it personally, uh, we are going to be blowing legs off. Um, it's the easiest way to take an enemy mech out in most cases. Uh, whether they're a fast mech or a slow mech, either way, once your leg is off, you're really going to have a bad day. Your mobility drops, uh, that's usually not going to have as much armor as your uh, as your center torso or your, either of your torsos. We're going to go ahead and drop the Boreal Reach. And that leaves us with Steiner Coliseum. So this Fluffy Nuts here has two wins and nine losses with a .22 ratio. I'm running at a .83. Pretty close to one to one I had some uh, some early losses that prevented me from being able to maintain that one one ratio uh, just as I was getting used to playing this playing the game uh, this particular style as it is um, one of the cool things about this particular map is that a lot of people like to go down the center trying to engage and we're up against a powerful mech uh it's actually one of the strongest in the alpha division or in the division one um i believe that is the six projectile variant of the annihilator and so that's going to be really rough we want to adjust this so that all of those are done in sequence and We'll go ahead and set that up. All right, so there he is. And the Annihilator, we really don't want him, we don't want to fight him at range. We want to fight him in the up close and personal kind of way. Ideally, using our greater mobility to take him out. And if I'm guessing right, he's going to be on just the other side of this hill hopefully pointing the opposite direction. We'll be able to get an early lead on him. Go ahead and hit my override. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe we're playing a little NASCAR here. There he is. 
Clever. And he already wiped out. Wow. We're going to try to get around him here. Doesn't look like that's going to be a thing. And he ghosted us. Brilliant setup. Awesome uh, way of protecting his mech. He went to the corner, found himself a spot in the back, and used what he had to his advantage. And it cost us. That's awesome strategy. I, I have nothing negative to say about that other than I got my butt kicked. So good on him for taking advantage of that. It's the first time I've seen anybody pull that off. Actually, it's the first time I've ever seen anyone try it, so that's even better. Something to consider for future maps. I'm a little more engagey. I like to get up, uh, get up and actually be the the hunter. I'm not a stalk and prey kind of guy, so it might not be something you see me do very often. But hard to say anything negative about the the efficiency of it. I did a great job. All right. Now, I do prefer the jungle. And it's Fluffy Nuts again. So let's see what he pulls off. See if he has a similar strategy for this, this map. <laughs> He's amazing job of taking off... Uh, good chunk of my weapon right there one of the coolest parts about Solaris is that I find uh, it's a lot more adrenaline inspiring really easy to get into it so he's running five projectiles That's, I wonder what he's got on there So I'm going to get that early lock on him, see if we can't find him, and then we're going to hook left and try this time to not let him get the first couple of volleys right into my face. Rotate. And we exceeded limit, so we're almost guaranteed to be wiped out right here. Yeah, he totally took me out right there. Lots and lots of firepower. He did a great job of making sure that I felt what he was doing. It was a little bit of an ego crush, not going to lie. 474 damage done. Three components destroyed. And he crushed my face. The Annihilator is quite beefy opposition. All right. So as it stands, going against Fluffy Nuts over and over and over again, it's a lot like banging my head against the wall. The guy did a great job. Instead, we're going to drop down to a division that I'm a little more comfortable in. And that is Division 3. This is the build that I use with my buddy. And we do pretty well. There's a lot of king crabs in this division. King crabs are good. A little slower. Uh, you can use your mobility against them. One of the advantages of the... Zero XP that I use here is that you can uh, utilize the ECM. ECM is an awesome tool uh, and undervalued in this uh, this style of play. 
the biggest advantage that I see with it is that when you use it, obviously you have the advantage of possibly getting off that first shot, which is huge. But you also have the advantage of uh, being able to prevent them from locking onto you. So once you do get into engagement range and you're going to do the little dance that we do as mech warriors, uh, circling around each other and trying to get that uh, that edge, go ahead and hit J. Make it to where they can't target you. And see if that doesn't just improve your overall ability to survive. And go ahead and get rid of the jungle on this one. Different max, slightly different style of play. All right, so this guy has no visible record, but uh, it takes a couple minutes for them to upload. So he could have had the last couple matches be a complete dog stomp and kick the crap out of his opponent, or it could actually be his first match. Hopefully, we're going to have a good match here. Let's see what we're up against. Okay. Seventy two point nine KPH and a heavy. Cataphract has a lot of armor. Add in the ECM and you've got quite a bit of mobility. Maybe not as much as he's going to be able to... Wow, that was super quick engagement. So he's putting damage on me really, really good, but he's spreading it out. And at the moment, I was facing the wrong way. You can tell. This guy has been and there we go. I basically just out armored him. He was way more mobile, way better at being able to uh, to get his shots on. That's reflected on the damage done: 455 to 169. Um, the problem that he was having was he was spreading his damage across everything. As great as that is um, in quick play, because your teammates can follow up with that. Concentrated fire in a location is always going to be your best bet. Uh, the cataphract has this particular model of cataphract is currently, I believe, 102 center torso armor. All right, and then if you take into consideration the fact that it's got the structure behind that, that's a whole lot of uh, firepower you have to put right there in one spot. If you look here, 104 
in the center torso. So, yeah, as you can see, that's that's pretty hard to break through. And compare that to the legs at 85 and 85. So there's more armor on the legs, but you're also going to be having a lot easier time targeting both the legs than the single center torso. You know, so something to consider when you're playing the game. If you do have someone who just wants to stand there and stationary and take it right to the face, give it to them right in their face. But if you're moving against somebody that has a little bit more mobility or is uh, is not accustomed to moving back and forth, you know, using their, shi their shield, well, take off a leg. See if that doesn't aid you in your endeavors. Get the back armor, you know, that kind of thing. And that's another advantage is their back armor and their front armor are not shared. So if you mess up their back and they're facing you for the rest of the time, you've just wasted the damage into their back. Whereas if you're putting damage on their legs, that transfers over to the front. There is no front back of the legs. It's just the legs. So you wipe out a leg, whether it's the front or the back, you're able to take them, uh, take them out that way. Do be careful. People like to uh, use the wounded leg to shield because that damage is transferred instead of into the other leg. It's actually transferred up into the, uh, the torsos. So you do have to aim. You have to make sure that you're taking advantage of that. Um, if it's the same guy, I would prefer fighting... Okay. Nope, it's not the same guy. This guy has 34 wins and 10 losses. That's quite a beefy uh, beefy stats. Really impressed with the mobility of that last guy, though. He did a great job of getting in there, hitting and moving. He was sticking and moving each round. So, good on him. It didn't work this last time, but I imagine that will be a successful victory in the future. Successful strategy, rather. All right, King Crab. Now, basically, this will be my opportunity to be the agile one, or I will die. King Crab does not have the greatest turn uh, turn rate, so we're going to try to take advantage of that. Love the announcer on this thing. It's, he's hilarious. Oh, there he is. Okay. So, he probably visually saw me. I imagine he did. And he's going to take advantage of the fact that he has way more armor than I do in order to... Uh, to lay that fire down. Yep, and I have to spool up, so we are going to have to be a little bit more agile. Do a little shielding here. We're going to wait until my rotaries are rebuilt. Ooh, he wanted to engage on that. That was really smart of him. Spool him up, and here we go. Yeah, he totally ghosted me. Once again, using your advantage. If you have the armor, just be in the right spot. You know, make them come to you. Especially if you're able to put out that kind of damage like that. That was really good play. Really good play. Basically, he did 429 damage to me. <laughs> so there we have it. Two, uh, one and one uh, on the cataphract, and a couple of just really bad butt kickings on the mauler, and that's hilarious for you. Um, really fun style of game, and I am really enjoying it. So hopefully, this will help you out in your future matches. 
do enjoy. And uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, I'm always down. Hit me up. Have a good one.